Hello, I'm Alice Sella. I'm a docent here at the Basilica of St. Lawrence. We're considered the jewel of Asheville. It's filled with art and architecture that is simply beautiful, and I'd love to share it with you. One of the first things people notice coming into the Basilica is the marvelous dome, the trademark of Rafael Guastavino, the architect. It's 82 feet in length and 58 feet in width, and its trademark is also the herringbone pattern that Guastavino puts in all of the domes that he makes. It's remarkable because it has no support. There are no pillars holding it up, and yet in a hundred years, we've never lost a tile. Looking at the dome, you can't help but notice the banners that are hanging around the perimeter of the church. Interesting enough, the banners on the east side of the wall are the coated coats of arms of all the popes who have been reigning since this church was built. The coat of arms of Benedict XVI, the current pope, are hanging over the pulpit. On the other side, we have the coats of arms of the bishops of the area who were supportive of this building while it was in construction. Their coats of arms hang here on the west side. As we approach the sanctuary, the eye is drawn immediately to the hand-carved tableau over the altar. It's from the 17th century and is an exquisite work of art brought to the United States by Rafael Guastavino. The curved wall behind the altar is called a reredos. And in this case, it exhibits the largest expression of polychrome terracotta art that has ever been known here in the United States. Life-size relief of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are on the Roredos, and the tableau itself is flanked by two of the guardian angels, Michael with his sword, his foot on the head of the devil. And on the opposite side, we find Raphael, the archangel, carrying the fish. An outstanding feature of this church are the stained glass windows. They come from Germany, and they're a classic example of German art. The windows reflect, as artists will easily recognize, the pre-Raphael influence. They do look like paintings. They're romantic and rich and full of color and full of symbolism. You'll notice that if you look at the faces, the expressions are easily readable. The clothing and the embroidery and the detail in these paintings is absolutely beautiful. This chapel is very unique. It was designed to honor Mary, the Mother of God, and it is crafted to really complement a lady. Done in soft tones of blue, a polychrome terracotta, this chapel has its own dome. The statue over the main altar is a copy of Murillo's famous painting of the Assumption of Mary. It's been executed in marble. To the side, we see a beautiful stained glass window depicting Mary, Queen of the Sea. She placidly looks out at you holding the child Jesus, also very serene, despite the stormy waters behind them. Here on the other side of the chapel, rising above the polychrome terracotta trim and the lovely angels, we see the piece de resistance here in the chapel. It's a beautiful painting from the 17th century. It shows Mary, who has come to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Over Mary's shoulder, you will see the two husbands, Joseph and Zechariah. The painting was done by Maximo Stanzione, a 17th century artist, and is one of a group of five. The other four hang in a cathedral in Milan. Sadly, Raphael Guastavino, the architect and artist that created this church, never lived to see it finished. He died in 1908, some months before the actual completion of the church, and this tomb of his was designed by his son, Rafael Guastavino, Jr. The tomb was designed to accommodate his remains and those of his wife and daughter. Unfortunately, after Guastavino was buried here, the city of Asheville passed a law saying that people could no longer be buried in churches, so his wife and his daughter rest in Riverside Cemetery with O. Henry and Thomas Wolfe. 
The facade of this building shows us Spanish Renaissance architecture at its very best. Rafael Guastavino, the architect, gave us a real jewel. The brickwork alone could not be copied and is no longer done in this day and age. Atop the church, we see our patron saint, St. Lawrence. He's holding a gridiron. This was the method by which he was martyred. St. Lawrence is flanked by two saints. St. Stephen, the very first martyr, holds a stone, the method of his martyrdom. And on the opposite side, we see Aloysius Gonzaga. He was a young seminarian at the time of the plague who died assisting other people. He was a favorite saint of Rafael Guastavino. The legacy of Rafael Guastavino is this beautiful basilica done in Spanish Renaissance architecture. It has no equal, and we're very proud of it. We do hope that you will come and see it in person. Tours are available following all of the masses on weekends. Come at 6 o'clock on Saturday evening, or perhaps 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, or 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. We would love to show you our beautiful basilica in person. Please come and visit.